This is another carnation. No carnation? Nope, not the right. No, nope, wrong <laughs> one. R not the same. No, different species. <laughs> edit, edit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Blue Jay Bonsai. And in today's episode, I head out on this snowy, blustery day to visit Ray at the Bonsai Nursery. I'm actually going there to meet up with a senior member of the Toronto Bonsai Society, where he'll be doing a repot, wiring, and styling of a tree for an upcoming session. And I'll be recording it to produce a video for the club. Lucky for me that between takes, I got to hang out with Ray. And as usual, he was more than willing to share his bonsai knowledge with me. And as always, I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ray. All right, so this, this is Prunus Mume, not hardy outside. So I grow it in the greenhouse. And so it's the first time I've ever had access to the plant because you can't get it. It's very hard to get come by, but slowly they're coming along. But these are starting to bud now, and I'm hope got my fingers crossed to see if I can get them to flower. So if these guys flower this spring, I'm going to hand pollinate them all, so I can get some seed, and then I can actually start to produce it from seed. So that's the point of this particular plant. I took some cuttings. We'll see what happens. If they work from semi-hardwood cuttings, then perfect. If not, I'll just do softwood cuttings in in June, and. Uh, and, and propagate from that. So They're not hard to propagate from When that. you got them, they were little seedlings, right? When I got them, they were um, half an inch caliper wow. bare root trees. So did you put that movement into it down there? No, no, they're grafted. Oh, they're grafted, that's at, a graft. they're grafted at this point. Okay. And I don't know what they're grafted onto. I never asked. I can make gotcha. a phone call and find out. But, but they grow incredibly fast. So if, if you wanted to do some bonsai with this, would you air layer it? Or if you can get the cuttings to go? Cuttings. They produce cuttings? from cuttings really well. Cuttings? But uh, beautiful, beautiful plant. But it's always ever shown when it's dormant and in flower. And after that, you never see them again because, you know, big leaves, they, they, they will stay small. But it's always ever displayed in the dormant state with blooms on them. That's when they, they look their best. Once they're finished, then they go. And then you, you grow them out and you work on them and you go from there. So it's a Japanese apricot. Uh, Prunus ume or mume. Very nice. But they're starting to crack open now. The temperature's here, so in the next couple of weeks they're going to be in bloom. Yeah, these are flower buds coming. Oh yeah. This is going to be nice because I'm going to hand pollinate them and we'll go from there. Nice. This is hop hornbeam. This is uh, Australia Virginiana, as opposed to our other hornbeam, which is which is ironwood or Carpinus caroliana. This is native to Ontario. Spectacular bonsai. It has little balls of fruit that hang on it where the seed are and it looks like hops that's why they call it hop oh, but okay. uh, native to ontario wonderful plant hard to get as a seedling so i brought these in and it was the only thing i ended up wiring this winter because like two months got away from me but they're they got the structural wiring on them and they got big fat buds ready to go and in about another two two months or three months i'll take the wire off and then let it grow out and then style them again next spring nice these are the uh, the larch I think uh, you were showing me last time. Yeah. How old are they? Three-year-old seedlings from seedlings. Yes. They grow really fast. You put some really nice movement into them, I see. Well, the structural wiring was done, and now I'm going to take them, like for instance, some, something like this. And I'll take this, this literati form, and the, wi <laughs> and the wiring marks are just coming out. By the end of the year, these will all be just little little slight marks. So now I got to figure out where, where I'm, how I'm styling, where the trunk line's going to be. So now I'm going to start wiring the branches. It's a good time to start now because the buds are just starting to swell, and in some of them they're starting to crack open now. So good time to start working on them. Nice. So only the only initial wiring was done along the main trunk line, the structural wiring. Now I'm going to come and start wiring all these branches. I got to figure out what I'm going to do here. I'm not sure, but that's the next job. And then they're going to get potted up into bigger pots to push out the growth and heal up these scars and away we go yeah they're looking good Ray well the wire only came off uh, two three five months ago and the marks are almost gone you can just barely see the remnants of the marks I barely see it on that one yeah. you know what 
But what it does is it gauges the bark and it thickens the branches. I don't mind it at all. I think it adds It'll character. disappear over time. Yeah. And then behind you is the other crop, which is about a year, two years behind. These are, these are two-year-old seedlings. They grow, larch is one of our best plants. It grows really fast. And you can see the wire marks on these. So these will be gone by the end of the season. So that's what those ones used to look like. Yeah. And they're yeah, almost gone. A year gone. ago. Really cool. Oh, were you telling me about your Arctic plants or what are those? The alpines? Alpines. Yeah, the alpines are here. I mean, they go hand in hand with bonsai plant with, with trees because these grow above the tree line or at the tree line. They're with, they're with larches and, and pines and junipers and you'll find them hand in hand with some of the older plant material if they can find a nook or cranny or crevice to grow in. And so they make excellent kusumonos. I grow lots of alpines. Can you show me one? Yeah, sure. This is an alpine carnation. Uh, carnation? Yeah, Dianthus pet, I can't even read it. But it's it's very, very hard. It's oh, a, it, it feels like a, sort of like a cactus. Almost, it's, it's, a, it's a cushion, it forms a cushion. And it's very tight and it's, it allows it to survive those harsh conditions because it's low to the ground. Six inches above the ground, the temperature drops drastically. So close to the ground and it forms this dome and it protects all the buds and it's underneath the snow. And as soon as the snow, the snow disappears, these things start to bloom very, very quickly. And they've already started to brighten up. So here's a different species compared to this species here. This is another carnation. They root quite well. Wow. <laughs> this is another, this is our area. So this was, this doesn't form a cushion, it forms a mat. And they actually formed seed last year. This Ooh, is, wow. they're seeding here. But they're very, very dense. And they cool. hug the ground. So they make really good kusumonos. And they're hardy. And they can sit outside on top of the ground just like this. They're rock bottom hardy. Really? Good plants. Do you grow those just for yourself or do I you sell those, those as well? Well, it's, I've been growing them since I was 15. That's a long time now. So <laughs> uh, off and on, but I'm back at it growing them again because I've got time to work with it. And I just, I love alpine plants. They're, they're not difficult, but they're, um, they, uh, they're satisfying. And they work, like I said, they work in conjunction with bonsai and I like them. So I grow them for Kusumono. Really cool. But you can also grow them like this too, where they actually grow on <gasps> rocks. Oh, that and so, one is so cool. And so you guys, we have the pumice that I think I showed you last yeah, year that yeah. I bring in. And so this is bits of pumice or tufa. If you can get real tufa, tufa's banned now. You can't use it. But pumice works just as well. And you drill holes into it and then right through the rock and then the rock is planted in the pot and then the alpine this is a saxifrage and it's not going to bloom this year but i got some more that are going to bloom and they're growing right on the rock right in the rock the holes are drilled can you turn it oh my god does it stay that tiny yeah oh. it forms a it forms a little cushion that is it doesn't so grow much cool. taller than that and it'll just creep along and and then i'll probably take this out and put it into a big trough that i've got over there so this is what's called an encrusted type of saxifrage. Almost like a hens and chick. Very That's similar. what it looks like. Well, hens and chick's separate. an alpine plant too, right? Oh, okay. So, but see the babies are coming in here so oh. we can separate those out. And hopefully they're going to bloom. <laughs> I like the it. flowers are beautiful. But this one produces a, a big panicle, a shoot. Really? Lots of flowers, yeah. Really cool. That's it? That's all I can do right Oh now. man, you are so fast, Ray. Well, no, it's not fast. It's just, that's all I can do with it. And then I'll come back and I'm just trying to eliminate, do it quickly, eliminate what I can, and then come back to it when I have to wire. Yeah. See, then I'll pick it back up again and go, okay. Well, there's not much to work with, right? I have to let all these little branchlets grow out. Right. And then once I let them grow out, then I can make a decision. But I got other decisions to make. So I'll leave this one alone and just move on. And that's really the best way to deal with this stuff. This is a drop branch. Is it ever? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I bent it. That's the actual trunk line, and I oh, bent it over. Wow. So it was about this tall, and I cranked, and you can, and I cranked it over. So this guy's coming along down here, something like this. So I haven't wired it yet. I'm just trying to prune things and get things ready to wire later on. See all these little branches to work with. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. 
I really don't know. I know there's certain things I can eliminate and I can cut some things back to head back to growth. I'm probably going to come back and hit them again, but right now I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'll just stop the growth. <clears throat> and I don't know where my leaf is going to be, but I'm sure it's going to be this branch here. And I don't need this branch. This is a pain. It's in the way. Ooh. And see this guy too? Yeah. He's, he, really the tree, really the tree is this. This is the tree. Right. And I'll start to restyle this. I'll keep these here because they're going to grow and they're going to fix all this mm -hmm. stuff up. So I'll leave it. But this is the branch that comes down like this. Here's another pad right here. There's another pad that goes right over top. The back one's there. And this guy's kind of come right over top of all that. And then I'll probably twist this guy oh, around. Yeah, yeah. Or I might just, I might, him go bend, I might bend it down again and let another leader come up. <laughs> and another, so hard to right, say. Right, yeah, hard to be say. cool because you have this one yeah. coming down. Hard make to him say, come down, I don't know. And then someone else comes out. So, that's a nice one too. Yeah, so. Well, we don't need this branch. And it's all these little branches we don't need. Mm -hmm. And I don't need that one. It's, and anything close to the trunk line, we don't need. Like this guy in here. I don't know what I'm going to do with that guy. See, they're starting to bud now. Times, 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 ready, perfect time. That tells me when you see, when you see those green buds, you know you got root activity. Can't get that before this. Right. This happens that starts to happen. So as soon as I see that, then I know, okay, root system's active, they're starting to grow. Yeah, time to, so time to start to keep, I gotta, I gotta put more, I gotta, I gotta flood these things <laughs> today. I gotta put some water on them. So here's a branch here, what am I gonna do? So oh, there's another little side piece here, don't need that. Uh, get that out of here. Don't need this. See, don't need this. It's the easy stuff, eh? Mm -hmm. And so when you start taking out the easy stuff, you start seeing everything. Oh, there we are. There's a problem right there. So am I keeping these? Am I keeping this? Hard to say. Like, hard to say. What am I keeping? Mm -hmm. It's a lovely branch, this branch. but. Once again, you don't need this branch back in here. We don't need this branch in here. We don't need that branch in there. And we don't need that branch back there because they don't make good branches. You can't have a, a, a one of your primary branches with all these little branches up near the trunk line. It doesn't work like that in nature. They're mm -hmm. clean and clear. Yep. So we clean this all up. We clean this all up. I don't know what I'm doing with those. I know I don't need this branch. If I don't do this, they'll get away from me. Then there's lots of stuff that needs to be pruned. I might not get a chance to wire them all, but they've been pruned. Yeah. And then I'll see what happens later on. See, all this has to come out. This has to come out. All in the act because you're trying to create branches, mm -hmm. right? So this all has to be cleaned out. So if you're coming in here, See all in here? Mm -hmm. From the from the bottom, you gotta clean all this stuff out. And I mean, you're cutting, but in a lot of cases I'm just pulling. But you get to a certain point, certain things you can pull off and other things you have to cut. And junipers, you really need to cut. Otherwise, you're gonna tear all the wood. But certain things you can you can get you can get away with. And so, you're taking out, let me go get my scissors. <laughs> so this is weak, right? So we're mm -hmm. taking out the weak. And I'm gonna uh, I might leave that. But anything that's screw underneath, we don't need. All these little weak pieces, the weak, the unnecessary, we take out. Remember, this is this is the bottom, right? Yeah. So I'm, we're gonna clean up the bottom of the pad. And if only you could do it like this in real life. <laughs> well, yeah, turn the tree upside down, <laughs> right? So we don't need this. And all this in here, we don't need all these in the axles. I'm going to open this up a little bit more, but it's dense, so I want to open this up. So now we get the top of it. And there's a conflict there, so we take the weak out, keep the strong branches, take this out, take this out. I don't want that little pad there. 
And this guy's in here, we take him out. And we're gonna take this guy out. Okay, so we've opened up the, so we've opened it up. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I'm gonna, what you're gonna, what you're trying to do is open this all up so you can see where all the branches are. So here's a, here's a good example. So we're gonna take this out, take this out, and now there's a good branch in here. So we're gonna clean all this stuff out so I can see branches, I can figure stuff out where I'm gonna go with this. And you get to a certain point, you can't, you can't pull anymore, you have to cut. And junipers, like I said, you have to really cut. And they'll tell you that. People, other artists will tell you that. And then I can open this all up because it's dense. And you're trying to clean, get branches, open it all up, wire all this stuff out. And then you're able to figure, fix all the pads. But that's why junipers are a lot of work because you got to sit here and clean them all out. And then when you get to the end and you're starting to figure stuff out, then you can <laughs> sit there and hand pluck and get them all evened out. This you can do. Wow. But junipers are a lot of work. If you have to start like this, if you, it takes a couple hours at least to work on one of these trees, just to clean them all up. Because you got to clean them all up so you can see where you're going, and you want to open up, and you want to get rid of, so you want to get the light in. And then they bud back. The nice thing about them, they bud back all in the all in the axles and all in here. They'll they'll just they push out growth tremendously. <laughs> now, if you look at these trees, we're going from we're going from a large tree and scaling it down. It's a lot of work. It's hard to it's hard to bend these. They don't bend so easy. They're gonna snap on you. Right. But if you start with the small ones like these guys here, I find it more effective to start small and work up. Going large and coming down, lots of work. I had a great time hanging out with Ray today at the Bonsai Nursery and making the video for the Toronto Club. I didn't pick anything up today, but I'll be back again in spring. And now it's time for Subscribers Picks. If you'd like to see your bonsai or pre-bonsai on the channel, then send us an email with your name, the type of tree, and any other interesting information. Mippy from the Toronto Club sent me this really cool video of a bonsai pot that she made with Wayne at his Artisan Works studio. As well as this video of her boyfriend Dan's amazingly cool boat pot. She wants to see if she can make a tree that looks like a sail to put in it. Any suggestions, let us know in the comments. Christopher from the channel, The Nature Creator, sent me this picture of his beautiful little Australian tea tree. Now I want one of these. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks for watching Blue Jay Bonsai. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe so we can bring you more videos.